Hey everyone, we are joined here on a Saturday by some West Coast chefs I'll introduce in a minute, but this is a uh, another Chef to Chef Live presented by Club and Resort Chef Association. And this week we're sponsored by Prosciutto di Parma. Uh, we appreciate them being sponsors. So let me just introduce the three chefs we have here. Uh, we have uh, Thaler Johnson from Oranita Country Club. We have Derek Ingram from Olympic Country Club. We have Matt Azevedo from the Peninsula Golf and Country Club. Chefs, thanks for joining me on a Saturday here. Uh, everybody doing good? Very good. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yep. Uh, let, let's get into some questions. And um, Chef Johnson, we'll start with you uh, about just where your club is at right now as far as a la carte dining and um, revenues and, and menus and things like that. You want to just uh, kind of run us through what uh, day to day operations are like? Yeah, so uh, we were closed down for about a month. Um, we opened up for takeout. Um, like the second week of April. Um, we did sort of a family style dinner for four, six, eight, twelve. 12. Um, it was quite successful. Um, we did pantry boxes um, and we've done a meat and seafood sale every for the last uh, about two and a half months, which has been really great. The members are, uh, you know, they don't have to go to the Whole Foods and pay 40 bucks for a filet. Um, so it's been a great value for them. Um, we were supposed to get the go ahead for indoor dining on July 1st in our county, and they pulled the plug on that. Um, we were going to open Thursday. They pulled the plug on that Monday. So basically, Arinda is, is on the side of a cliff. So we don't have, well, the side of a hill. So we don't have a lot of outdoor patio space. Um, we have two small patios. So basically, what we did is we, uh, we're using one of the upstairs patios and then we set up a dining room in the parking lot and it actually looks pretty nice and we've been doing that for this this is our third week um we're probably doing about 50 or 60 covers a night plus another 20 or 30 to go um the revenues are good um but as far as overall revenue we're way 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 you know under budget but we've also significantly under budget and labor. So we usually lose about $800,000 a year in food and beverage. And I think um, we're gonna do way better than that. So even though the revenues are down, um, we're not gonna lose nearly as much money as we normally do. We've laid off probably 80% of our kitchen staff and front of the house staff, um, basically just salary guys and two cooks helping us pull all this off. So. Um, it's been challenging. I'm working a line every night, but I'm actually just liking getting back to cooking and, and uh, getting my hands on food. So, um, yeah, that's about all we're, we have going on right now. Yeah, I, I hope you still feel that way in a, in a couple of months and, you know, you're yeah. still, you know, excited about losing all your, your hair on your fingers again. Yeah. yeah, I got burns and hairless forearms, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's been nice for now. Cool. For sure. Chef Ingram, where, where are you guys at? You are, um, we discussed it a little bit earlier, but at Olympic Club, you are in the city portion of Olympic Club as opposed to the golf side of Olympic Club. Talk to me about your operation uh, there. You just want the city property or you want both? Uh, you can give us a, you know, a roundabout about both of them. That'd be great. So kind of the same boat as... Uh, all of us are in the same kind of boat. We opened up as soon as we could with outdoor dining out at the golf course. As soon as they opened, the golf courses were allowed. We had to offer some food. So uh, we're doing outdoor and to go only for uh, four days a week. Two weeks ago, we opened for lunches as well for the golf, golf course. Again, only four days a week. Um, you know, a lot has to do with the staff. You know, San Francisco, we're union property. Costs us a lot of money for staff. We pay equal amount in benefits as we do in wages. So uh, we don't want to pull a whole lot of staff back. Um, we want to try to stop the bleeding as much as we can. So we're just doing the four days a week. Uh, down in the city, um, things are a bit tighter. We don't have a lot of outdoor space. So we got a bit creative and there's a big deck on the sixth floor outside the gyms that they use for uh, stretching and they do some exercises out there. But since the gyms can't open, we kind of took that spot over. 
and uh, we fit 46 seats out there and we're doing four nights a week. We're doing some dinners out there and we're doing some wine pairings, just trying to happy hour specials, anything we can to try to get people in the door. But being I'm right downtown with all the offices closed, it's a bit of a struggle. So, you know, we're trying to offer as much as we can for the members, but there's just not a lot there right now. It was interesting to hear uh, Chef Johnson talk about it. You guys, all you chefs were just ready to open up this Friday as of yesterday, and they just, all of a sudden, it was just time out. We're not doing it for indoor dining for everyone. That was, that was at the beginning of July, yeah, for our county. I don't, I don't think okay. we ever got that That's close from the state. Indoor dining, indoor dining is a statewide no now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Chef, they you weren't. Any space on your club then? For us. Well, they, those guys are on, in the city and, and on the peninsula. I'm, I'm in the East Bay and in Contra Costa County. They were, things were looking good at the end of June and they were going to allow us to do indoor dining. And then um, we got news Saturday that they were going to review it because there was a bunch of outbreaks. And then Monday they announced that they, they were not going to allow us to do indoor dining, which I'm grateful for. It would have been a horrible idea um, given the direction of this thing now. So um we were able we have a big joke around here called pivot you know we just pivoted and figured out what else we could do um the benefit right now is that most of the people that are working are on salary so anyway our labor is somewhat fixed so any way we can figure out to sell more product and bring in more revenue it just helps increase the bottom line because our base most of the people are on salary so it's kind of a nice um benefit but the revenues will nowhere you know obviously nowhere near where they should be chef matt you, you're running a pretty good property that's probably a, a fraction of what you normally do you want to walk us through what uh what your day-to-day -day operations are like as well yeah day-to-day -day, um you know to kind of expound expound a little bit upon what thayer's talking about that the you know especially in the early spring when this thing was you know starting to really explode um you know the mandates and from the county and the state are, are constantly changing so so the the operation we've been running has really evolved a lot and it just kind of continues to evolve um so i've you know i've had to try to be as as flexible and as fluid as i can with it we started in in easter week the week before easter we did a to-go operation um, for about 150 families um pick up only and then after that, we opened our poolside cafe uh, to take out. Uh, it's pizza, pizza, wing, salad, uh, pretty casual food, but it was really, really successful at first. Um, so, you know, as time went on, you know, kind of, we, we have a big golf centric membership, but we also have a lot of young families, right? So as time went on and uh, in the beginning of the May of May, when the state gave us the okay to, or the county gave us the okay to uh, allow golf, we opened up and we're getting like 150 rounds a day. So um, we put together a lunch menu and outdoor dining was just coming in, into being allowed there. Um, you know, and that, you know, it's mostly golfers that are just picking something on the turn for lunch right now. We have been packing the pool deck pretty good. We have, Tables on the pool deck, they're allowed to sit outside in a social bubble bubble of up to six. So we can have up to six tops. And we have our pool deck uh, full, full, filled with about 48 covers and then another about 24 on the front terrace. And um, we're doing that pretty much every day for lunch. Um, then we're also operating the, uh, the, the to-go operation at night and we have outdoor dining at night and I, uh, you know, I offer both menus. I, I, I offer the cafe menu, which is, you know, casual. And then uh, just recently, about, about three weeks ago, we started doing a bistro menu that we change almost every night and uh, just try to give a little bit more upscale offerings. And um, that's been really successful, too. Um, we did do a golf tournament about a month ago uh, in the middle of July. Um, just did it as a barbecue outdoors, kept everybody apart. Uh, but you know the the banquet business this this would be the time of year that we're slower because a lot of our members are traveling right now but um we are a neighborhood club as opposed to um maybe like you know maybe the, the lake course at olympic which is more of a golf destination 
Um, so we do have a pretty steady uh, a la carte business right now. We're doing about we're doing about seventy thousand a month in food, uh, and that's suffice it to say that is way off what we would normally be doing. Chef, so let's uh, let's touch base on that. And, and, and Chef Matt, thanks for um, touching base on it. About um, you're in Northern California, y your numbers are down. When people hear about California, uh, they're really talking about Southern California. Uh, but you know your your COVID numbers are are quite a bit down in your area. What uh, is everybody wearing masks in the kitchen? What's the what's the protocol for for you guys in Northern California right now? Because you, you seem to have a good handle on uh, you know what's going on and in, in, in the spread of, of what's happening. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I got I got my Arinda logo mask. Everybody's in masks. Uh, are their temperatures walking in? All the pretty typical protocol for people walking in the kitchen. Yep. Yeah, checks every morning. Uh, masks stay on. Um, gloves, you know, gloves with ready to eat food. You know, certain situations that's hard, but gloves with always with uh, ready to eat food. Um, and then, you know, very, very rigorous hand washing procedures and uh, social distancing protocols as best as we can get them. You know, um, we have that poolside cafe operating and that's not a huge kitchen. You know, the main kitchen here is large and spacious and I can keep everybody spaced out, but that small cafe, I can only put a certain number of people in there just to make sure that we're keeping, you know, keeping them apart and on different shifts. Yeah. Um, is everybody's pool on a reservation policy only? I'm assuming 50 people, yep. something like that. Pretty typical. Yep. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's, uh, I, I want to touch base on what, as we move past the pandemic, um, what are some really essential topics for uh, country club chefs that we need to address in the coming months? or into really even uh, 2021. Um, Chef Johnson, you got a you handle on maybe the big picture of, uh, about some, some things that are gonna be forefront for us uh, within the next six, nine months? Well, I mean, hopefully they, they have a vaccine and we can sort of, you know, move past this. I think it's gonna be, you know, if they find a vaccine, it's going to take a long time for the banquet business to build up. I mean, I imagine there'll probably be a rush of weddings at the beginning, but I, I think a lot of businesses, at least, you know, in the Bay Area with the tech companies and everything, that it's going to be slow for our, our banquet business to build up again. I mean, we're not a big banquet club. Um, you know, we do about, you know, 800000 a year in banquets in a, um, in a good year. So, um, I think it's going to be a slow build back up to normal. Um, you know, I'm really hoping the club has been very generous and kept paying um, for all our employees insurance that was full time. So they're not laid off their furloughed. We did lay off um, from my staff about six people. Um, but it's been a good time to clean house on some not great employees. And there is a heck of a lot of really qualified employees out there right now especially in the Bay Area, like Facebook, Google, Bon Appetit took, I would say 50% of the really qualified cooks and gave them a nine to five Monday through Friday job for 30 bucks an hour. And, and they've all been doing that for now, but those jobs aren't coming back. Um, so there's a lot of really qualified candidates. So I'd like to get to a place where we get our revenues and business up and we can hire some of these um, great people that are out on the streets on top of bringing back um, our staff but um with the slower business i've been able to focus more on farm product we work with a couple of farms and really um just trying to not mess up spectacular product that we're able to get here in california um so that's been my focus is smaller numbers but it's been able to really dial in and make nice food yeah that's awesome Chef Ingram, any, anything to add to that? Obviously, we all, we all know we need to kind of, uh, you know, find out where our banquet business is going forward. But uh, on a micro level, um, anything you're, you you think we start need to start focusing on as bank, you know, club chefs uh, in 2021? You know, it's it's gonna it's difficult to say because 
we have no idea where the industry is going to be in six to nine months. How many of those small local firms are even still going to be there? And how many of our suppliers are still going to be there? We might have to find, I've got three suppliers already that went out of business that I worked with. And how many of these guys can hold up for that long? And what kind of government regulations are we going to get? I think it's, uh, it's going to be a weird time because we can't really plan a year out right now until we know what the regulations are going to be on us and, and who's going to be left standing at the end of it. So it, it's almost, we're, we're day to day. Like even when this first happened, we were waiting to hear what, because we were getting no information to ourselves, even our boards. It was like, what, what are they going to tell us on the news today where we go tomorrow? And we're kind of going to be in that same, same path for a little bit here. Yeah, it's a good point. I didn't, I didn't think about that, and I, I didn't hear about a lot of these, you know, smaller farms not being able to, you know, sustain their, you know, their their products and and stay, you know, ahead of the curve as far as you know what they need to plant and everything like that. Yeah. Jeff, well, the good thing add to that anything that, um, you know, in in addition that you you think we need to, you know, keep our eyes on uh, going into next year. Um. Well, I think I think Thayer and, and, and Derek will probably smile at that at my my uh, inherent gloominess. Um, you know, I I, uh, <laughs> I I don't see banquet business coming back until at least probably spring 2021, and even then, um, I think it's going to be highly restricted. Um, you know, the, the members of my staff that I did have to lay off, I, I had to let go eight of banquet people uh, just because I don't have anything for them to do right now. So, um, you know, what, what what we're trying to do is is pivot into, um, Air says pivot, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, get more into really focusing in on a la carte and what other services we can provide because the board, you know, the board has been incredibly generous and um, uh, I don't want to get too deep into the financials, but has been more than uh, supportive of our, of our staff throughout this entire mess, even when we had the place in, completely shut down. Um, so, uh, you know, we all feel very fortunate and I'm kind of looking forward towards doing some smaller event a la carte type things where we can fit within the rules, you know, dinner and blanc, wine dinners um we're having a, a wine tasting that actually now takes them on a path throughout the property where they hit a different station at you know at a certain group of people at a time um so we're trying to get creative by doing on property things like that and also trying to come up with you know meal kit services and things like that where um where we think we're gonna we're really gonna need that in the winter right because we're right on the bay here and um even in July, it gets it gets pretty windy and cold at night. But um, you know that that outdoor dining we're we're pretty sure is is not going to be as robust uh, come November. So we're trying to think of ways around that as well. Hey, that that, that kind of traveling wine dinner. I'm sure people are going to borrow that. That's that's really cool. I like that because you can yeah, I'm, in groups, I'm stealing huh? it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm stealing it. He just wrote it, it down. <laughs> I mean, I will say, I wanted to add one more thing is, is I think, um, Tom, you and I talk about this, is that we're selling a lot of memberships, which is unusual. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because people feel like this is a safe place that they can come to um, and feel secure that their interests, their best interests are our concern, that they know that, that we're gonna be taking good care of them. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, we make our member money off of dues. I mean, like I said before, we lose a ton of money in food and beverage um, and dues are what drive the club. And I also think it's going to be really important. Um, and that was Matt, that was a fine example of finding creative ways to take care of our membership. Like we have our um, swaps on Friday, which is skip work and play. And normally they go out and play and it's a tournament and they come in and we have a buffet of, of appetizers for them. Um, we wanted to make it as normal as possible, so we put some tents on a putting green, and we made some um, deli sliders and some chips and, and everything, so they could have a little box when they got done. And we have our bar open for golfers when they're done golfing, so a lot of them, you know, socially distanced and spread out, hung out afterwards and drank, and, and they were grateful that it felt somewhat normal. And I think that's 
something really important is trying to give the members an escape and some sense of normalcy while they're at the club. Um, and, and we're talking about doing something for kids on the golf course for Halloween because there's not going to be any trick or treating. So, you know, we thought about putting up little stations all across our, some of our holes so the kids can come in and pick up candy. Um, you know, sharing, I think it's important for club chefs to share the great ideas and things that have worked really well with their membership. Um, so we can keep taking care of these people and keep staying, you know, selling memberships and staying um, successful. Yeah, I, I think that's what a lot of these Chef to Chef Liars are about, too. I, I hope people uh, tune in and, and, and kind of bower ideas or, or just, um, I think a lot of it is just making them feel a little more confident about where they're at. Uh, we've, we've had uh, almost everybody on has been very complimentary of their boards uh, and what they've done for them. Uh, and I think uh, going through this, as you know, Chef Ingram was talking about, uh, you know, where some of the uh, some of the job pool has gone recently. I hope people can realize that the sustainability of the country club uh, chef is is here, and, and the the members will take care of it, and we can out kind of um, move these things that are happening with us. So uh, I think it should be attractive for people coming to, you know, apply with us. And uh, thank you uh, for, for bringing that up as well, is that uh, the networking you guys do. You were saying there's a text that you guys all do. Uh, and that's what I, I think the, the Club and Resort Chef Association is all about too, is, is getting these people together to talk to, to exchange ideas and everything like that. Can you guys touch base on that briefly? Just uh, what are some of the topics you guys talk about with each other? Is it, uh, we obviously know right now it's just the challenges, but in a, in a typical world, what do you guys, what do you guys text each other about? Give each other hell. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. it you know, it's, uh, well, go ahead, Jared. I think, uh, you know, if someone's doing something interesting the last little while, we just text a picture or something like that. Um, it's kind of weird because, you know, when we were in the conference at the first of March, we all said, okay, this is what we're going to do when we get back. And two weeks later, we were shut down. So, yeah. you know, we had a look, we were planning on doing some dinners together and golfing and stuff like that. And that obviously didn't happen. So, uh, you know, we shoot stuff around Texas. I was at Lakeside yesterday helping Jason. And uh, Jason was texting these guys pictures of the dinner we were doing for the board and stuff like that. So it's just, you know, trying to stay in contact with not much going on, right? Yeah, yeah. It's most, you know, pictures of food or, hey, have you guys heard this or what's going on over there or, you know, or just how you doing? And there's a lot of, you know, giving each other grief, but it's, it's really cool um, to have our little network. We had one other chef who moved, uh, over to North Carolina, but you know, we need to expand our text message circle a little bit. It's fun. I enjoy when I see texts from these guys. Chef Matt, what do you like hearing about uh, the other chefs around the, the area? Well, you know, we, we talk a lot about just, you know, like we've, like we've touched on a lot of times uh, recently, we, you know, just the way this thing moves and the way this thing changes every minute. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's really nice to have not only a, a set of other guys that do what, you know, we all do the same job pretty much. Um, it's, you know, it's nice to have a set of friends that understand what you're going through. Um, so, you know, we talk about how we're pivoting to keep our people safe and how we're uh, working on, you know, still keeping it relevant. And, you know, I'm, I'm personally you know, maniacally driven and I'm uh, about, about, you know, about food and I'm feeling a little bit panicked right now because I just, I see, I see the, the, I see us having to probably really rein it in it to when, when winter's coming, right? Because I just, I just don't logistically understand how we're going to make it happen. So I'm trying really hard to push with the food right now uh, because that's what, you know, the members are seeming to respond to. And it's really nice to be able to bounce ideas off these guys and, you know, send pictures to each other and, you know, uh, just kind of get feedback and, and kind of help each other kind of push, you know. 
Yes, the, the support's got to be really helpful now. And and I I was a little complacent to think about uh, California and yeah, Northern California is much different than Southern California. You, you know, you're going to, you know, end of or middle, end of September, you guys start feeling a little chilly up there, don't you? Uh, well, usually, we're pretty good. In, in the city, our warmest month is October. Yeah, yeah usually so. not till about the middle yeah. of November. But we hit November, we're going to have to shut down our decks. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, I, I talked to people around the country and a lot of uh, East Coast chefs that, I, and what I asked them is, what are, what's the one thing you have on your menu that might get you fired if you, if you, if you took it off? And when we go to the East Coast and it's, it's, it's things like a crab cake or, um, you know, a seafood driven. Now, we're obviously going to the West Coast where you guys are on the coast and it, it could be seafood, but... Uh, Starting with you, Chef Johnson. Hey, talk to me about a, a menu item that's that's there that maybe you inherited or you you produce, but it's it's on there now to stay. It's uh it's definitely the General Chow's cauliflower. We do okay. uh, take some cauliflower, batter it with egg whites and cornstarch, and fry it. And then it's got uh, an orange chili sauce, pickled Fresno chilies, cilantro, puffed rice, and uh, some orange segments. And I sell. The crap out of it i sell for 14 bucks and it's got a food cost of about 350 so it's a really successful dish and and it's our number one seller for sure so uh, do you blanch a cauliflower first or nope. is it raw it's raw we just batter it and then part fry it in the, in the fryer and then cool it off and then when we get an order we drop it back in and uh, it's kind of a korean technique of breading it comes out really crispy and it's it, it you almost think you're eating chicken it's really uh so it's a vegetarian dish, so it's, you know, it works well in Northern California. <laughs> oh, and, and it's gluten-free as well, right? Because your egg whites no, and cornstarch? It's got soy sauce in the uh, Oh, soy, I guess, sauce. okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Chef Ingram, what, what do you have on your menu that uh, might get you fired if you took it off? Uh, it, it's funny, because being such a big club with two properties, it's kind of old school dish out at Lakeside. If we took off the Swanson salad, we would be, I'd be hung, and it's the worst salad ever, I think. Um, and in the city property, it's the fried chicken sandwich. If I took that off, I can't even tweak the garnish on it or I hear about it. So uh, I sell 80 to 100 orders a day. Fried is it just sandwich. simply just, is it marinated in, in country fried like? It's yeah, butter buttermilk marinated for 24 hours with some spices in there, and then breaded, seasoned breading. On a nice, really good ciabatta roll from Acme Bakery, and uh, yeah, you know it's jalapeno slaw and aioli. Nothing, nothing crazy, but it, they love it. Derek, tell them what the sandwich is out at the lakeside. That the, the horrible sandwich. The horrible sandwich. The one that's on rye bread with like shrimp. Uh, oh, the that's Olympic the, special. Uh, the Olympic special rye bread with avocado and baby shrimp on it. Totally. totally. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Open a butter lettuce leaf. leaf. A butter lettuce and, leaf. And they, the, all the old, <laughs> the old timers love it out there. Can't take it off. They can't take. I think they're trying to take it off now, yeah. but you know, they'll, they'll hear some grief. Yeah. Chef Matt, you had a minute to think. Um, you know, I, it's funny because uh, this whole situation, I've basically, you know, had the happy approach of, listen, I got to strip it down to whatever I can strip it down to, and, and we got to work with what we got right now. So I have been able to, uh, you know, kind of uh, slyly remove some of the things that I hate uh, from the menus. And I haven't got much pushback, you know, got to keep the classics around Caesar salad, Cobb salad, you know, for the casual food. But um, I have kind of, you know, disappeared some of the really, really old school 70s salads and things like that. Um, the one thing that I, that I, so I, my, my daytime sous chef has been here since 1990. Um, and when he got here, the Petrali Sol Piccata was on the menu. Uh, and if I took that off, I would be gone the next day. So, uh, yeah, sole piccata, old school, lemon beurre blanc, mashed potatoes, seasonal veg. It's, you know, it's old school, but they, 
it's always the number one seller and they cannot get enough of it. Uh, I would bet that 80% of the clubs in Northern California have some kind of Petrali sole menu and I'll bet 90% of those 80, it comes with lemon, lemon caper sauce. For sure. Yeah. I'm lucky. I don't have that here, but I've seen it at almost every club I've been to. I could never get rid of it. It's, yeah. it's, uh, for, for those of us who don't know, Petrali Sol, is, is, that a, is that an inland? Is that a waterway? Is it a, a, a canal? What is it? No, it's a ground fish, uh, coastal ground fish. So they dwell on the bottom. It's, it's a flat fish, like sure. uh, halibut. Um, nice fillets. It's a really, really mild flavor. Um, but uh, the, the members, it's the way they want to prepare it is it dipped in that old school cream and egg wash and, uh, you know, fried that way uh, in clarified butter. And um, to me, it's, 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 uh, you just taste like, it just tastes like egg, you know, um, because the, the, fav the flavor of the fish is so delicate. Yeah. You know, when you, you just dip it in, it tastes like kind of a fish omelet to me. But, <laughs> That's a but good they love it. But they love it. They love it. Chef, thanks for your time. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, we have time for right now, but uh, I, I'm I'm glad you're staying in touch with you uh, with each, with each other, and I'm glad you took the time to uh, you know share kind of what you're going through uh, with the rest of the country and uh, uh, stay in touch. And I'm sure we'll do the same. So thanks, everyone. Thank you very much.